In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May our Lord be with you. And call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God, Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the word that took our very flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And we pray. O God, who has been pleased to increase your adopted children in all the world, and who made the bond of the martyrs, St. Andrew Kim Taegan and his companions, a most fruitful seed of Christians, grant that we may be defended by their help, and profit always from their example. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezra. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Therefore, whoever among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. Let everyone who has survived in whatever place he may have dwelt be assisted by the people of that place with silver, gold, goods, and cattle, together with free will offerings for the house of God in Jerusalem. Then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and Levites, everyone that is whom God had inspired to do so, prepared to go up to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors gave them help in every way, with silver, gold, goods, and cattle, and with many precious gifts, besides all their free will offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, the Lord has done marvels for us. The Lord has done marvels for us. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord, the Lord has done marvels, marvels for us. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done marvels for us. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern deserts. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done marvels for us. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord, the Lord has done marvels for us. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowd, no one lights a lamp and conceals it with a vessel or sets it under a bed. Rather, he places it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. There's nothing hidden that will not become visible, nothing secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care, then, how you hear. To anyone who has, more will be given. From the one who has not, even what he seems to have will be taken away. 
the gospel of the Lord. Those of you who for years attended the 7 o'clock Mass in the morning, that crack of dawn Mass, know that I always talk, this is a very important gospel that Mother Church gives us today. And Nina read for us so well. In 587 B.C., all the, the Hebrews, the Jews, were transported after a disastrous military defeat into exile in what is known as the Babylonian captivity. That lasted from 587 to 521. So for 60 plus years, all the Jews were, it'd be like us being sent to Russia or something like that. And the temple was lost, destroyed, and they were prisoners for many of them the rest of their lives. In 521, God, I always tell you that God is the one writing the story, or at least that's how they're reading the story. God sends King Cyrus to say, okay, let the Jews go home to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple and begin to live their life as Jews again in the promised land, Jerusalem. And everything will be good again. Well, there's one itsy bitsy teeny weeny problem. What if they don't want to go back? I mean, I'm 60 plus. Imagine if you lived all your life in one area and you were settled there. Maybe some had married a Persian girl and now they're in their 60s. They were not interested in going back to Jerusalem. And the younger people had never seen Jerusalem. They had no interest in going back. I mean, maybe, maybe to grandpa that meant something. But to me, I'm very happy right here. I'm settled. I'm near death. I'm not going to move everything, livestock, family, back to Jerusalem. That means nothing to me. And so the prophets had to say, hey, you know, I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let's get moving to try to rally the troops. <clears throat> It's a real turning point, one of the real most important turning points in human history. Could the same thing be happening here? Oh, we haven't been living in exile, but we've been living in quarantine. I couldn't give this talk two years ago. What if the people say, I'm not going to come back to Mass? I'm watching at home. Hopefully they're at least watching at home. I don't want to be bothered with traffic on, on a snowy morning. God, they'll kill you outside the parking lot, outside church. Better move quickly. They'll run you over. I don't want to deal with all that now. I just sit right here in my bed and watch. Or maybe I just won't go back even to watch a Mass on TV. They got out of the habit of going to church every Sunday morning for, what, 18 months? And, and how do we <clears throat> get them back into a routine that we all had every Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning. What, what if they're not interested? Every religious leader in the country is asking the same question, not just me. As parish and as parishioners, we will all face that challenge of saying how important this is to gather together as a people, not just people, but a people, to praise God together as a community and be encouraged to go out and serve and build the kingdom of God. We're all going to have that challenge, not just me. Not just me. We've never lived through something like this before, a quarantine, a pandemic, never. And there's really no rule book to follow. Well, I know what they did then. The whole community finally said, our faith is that important. Well, we feel the same way. We will soon find out. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll offer our petitions to the Lord. <clears throat> our response, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we, the baptized, take up our role as a people who are called to attend to others, to be last and servant of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they prioritize action to protect the planet, making safe the climate, the water, and the biosphere for future generations. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the containment and eradication of the COVID-19 virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who asked us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially for Peggy Brady, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they be at peace with God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, we beg you to hear our prayers, awaken our faith, deepen our faith, that we may always gather to praise and thank you for all you have given to and done for us. We make all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look with favor, Almighty God, on the offerings of your people, bread and wine, our very lives. Through the intercession of the martyrs, grant that we ourselves may become a sacrifice acceptable to you for the salvation of all the world. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. The martyr's great example gives us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper ended, he took a chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We share some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourish with the food of the valiant as we honor the blessed martyrs. We humbly ask you, O Lord, that 
clinging faithfully to Christ, we may labor in the church for the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Mighty God bless us and all of our families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Lady Jans, we go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God.